Hey, Nico from VoiceFlow here. So I know, I know you are eager to test the latest model from OpenAI name GPT-40, but, and, and you will be able to do that in VoiceFlow uh, pretty soon to be honest, but in the meantime, and because I know some of you guys are going to test that whatever it costs. So uh, let's talk about using fallback when you do such kind of test. Uh, because we've seen that previously, um, when some uh, provider release new models, they can have a lot of uh, usage or a lot of user will want to test that as well. And if you use this model as the only one uh, to power your agent, uh, you might face some issue. So we are going to use the Cloudflare AI getaway uh, and most specifically the fallback feature. So what it means is Okay, let's give GPT-40 a, a shot and, and test that as much as possible. But if at any time something goes wrong, uh, we definitely want to uh, fall back to another model. So our agent will um, be still alive and, and, and will keep answering your user. So this is uh, what we're going to do, what we are going to build uh, in this video. Let's start with the, uh, the Cloudflare AI getaway uh, documentation first. So, uh, the main thing, the important thing here is if you go to the uh, supported providers, there's a bunch of those providers available. What we want to do here is we want to use OpenAI because uh, GPT-40 is uh, available uh, via the OpenAI API, but we also want to use Entropic. Um, and in our project, we're going to use Cloud Sonnet. So to be able to do this, instead of using a specific um, endpoint for one of those providers, we're going to use the universal endpoint. And this will allow us to use at least two models. Uh, you can add way more, but in that demo, we will use uh, GP40 by default and as a fallback, Cloud Sonnet. And this is why using the universal endpoint is important because those two will use different um, requests or different payload. The format is a bit, is a bit different. Uh, we will see that a bit later. In, in the project itself, but yeah, for example, uh, Entropy or Cloud Sonnet, um, the system prompt should be outside of the message array, for example, the way you uh, um, you set the API key is, is a bit different. So yeah, um, we need to keep that in mind. Uh, to create the getaway, uh, you can go to your Cloudflare account. Um, again, this is in uh, a beta, it's uh, free. So uh, give it a try. What you want to do is go to the AI, AI getaway, create a new one. So it can be whatever you want. The URL slug will be set automatically. You can also change that if you want to. I've already created one uh, named AI or fallback. So the only uh, thing you need now is if you click here, you will see that uh, be sure to be on the uh, universal endpoints, not any of those uh, dedicated provider endpoint. Because again, we need that uh, universal uh, endpoint. So you can copy that. Um, and then in the project, so that, that's all we need from Cloudflare, uh, at least for now. So uh, we can switch back to our project. And what I've done here is I've built two um, test block with uh, basically just an API step. And as you can see, I'm using that uh, same gateway endpoint. The header, uh, we just need to set that a content type to application JSON. And, and then here, we are only passing one um, provider. So this one is for Entropic. You see that the endpoint is a, it will be different. So if I switch to the OpenAI, provider is OpenAI, the endpoint is chat uh, completions versus here, Entropic v1 messages. Same for the uh, header, uh, API key is uh, X API key versus the authorization bar and then the uh, uh, the API key. Uh, regarding the query, so you want to pass the model for OpenAI, we want to use GPT-40. Uh, max token, temperature, both of those will be the same uh, for Entropic. Uh, the model is uh, Cloud uh, 3 Sonnet. But as you can see here, the system is outside of the message messages array. And uh, here we are just setting a, a basic uh, system prompt. And for the user, uh, the question is, how tall is the Eiffel Tower? Same for the OpenAI. 
why uh, I've built this is first to test that the endpoint is working as expected with uh, both of those providers, because as you can see, the payload is different. But also because if we test the request or if we send the request, uh, you can see that the response will be a bit different. Here um, for Entropic, we have a content array with a text, and this is the response we're looking for. But if I go to OpenAI and uh, the uh, GPT-4.0, this is in the choices array message content. So again, we should keep that in mind. The way we will get the answer will be different, either if we use Entropic or uh, OpenAI. But the thing is, we are going to use um, Entropic as a fallback. So we should handle the case where the response is coming from OpenAI with that specific format, as well as if the response is coming um, as a fallback from Entropic with that other specific format. So to deal with this, basically, we will just uh, get the full response, so the uh, the full object, and then we will use a JavaScript step to deal with that. So let's start building this. Uh, let's get some space here. So the first thing we will uh, add is a capture step, and we will use last two turns. That will be uh, the the user question. Uh, so how can I help, for example? And then we want to pass that to our AI getaway, but we are going to use uh, a dedicated um, payload. So we are going to build that payload within a JavaScript step. And I've already uh, done this, um, and it looks like this. So for the LLM system, so that will be the system prompt. Uh, this is just you are um, embodying the role of TCO documentation agent to answer a user's question. So obviously, you can change that to whatever you want. And the prompt, um, again, is just basically some uh, directives to get a response or um, return no answer if uh, the LLM is not able to answer the question. We are passing the last returns, uh, which is what we've just captured with the capture step. And the payload, and this is where uh, we are passing both of those uh, uh, models. The first one, OpenAI, we are going to use a variable for the OpenAI key. Um, that's the IPI key. And uh, the LLM system will be for the system. The prompt will be for the uh, user role. For Entropic, again, endpoint is, uh, is different. Uh, we are going to use the Entropic API key for this. Uh, and we need the Entropic version here. And uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, again, the, diff the main difference here is the system is outside of the message array. We are passing the LLM system value. And here we are using the prompt. OK, so we are capturing this. We are sending that to that uh, JavaScript step that will generate the payload. And now we will need one of those. So let's duplicate that. And uh, let's put it in there. So we already have that endpoint, but we can get rid of this and replace that with payload. That variable. Uh, do not exist yet, so we are going to create that. Payload, create a variable. OK. The response from that request will be saved into getaway response. This variable exists already, so we're good to go. And then, as we've seen, because the response format will be different from one provider to another, we are going to use this little guy here, which is another uh, JavaScript step. And with just one function that will just, if we are getting a response from OpenAI, we are setting the uh, answer value to the corresponding uh, pass. And same thing for Entropic. And answer will be populated uh, with this. And we are passing the getaway response, so the raw response from that API uh, call. So now, if I put this in there, I can, uh, that was answer. So I can use the answer variable. As you can see here, uh, we need API keys. But uh, why I've set that here is because a good practice is to uh, let's add 
um, let's add a set step here. And we are going, actually, we can even put that like, like right there. And this is where we are going to set all the variable, uh, the API key we need. So the first one will be open AI um, key, create the variable. And the other one will be entropic API key. Okay, so this one is the entropic. Do not forget the uh, single quote or double quote. You can use whatever you want here. And we are going to do the same for uh, this one. So this is for OpenAI. Here, single quote, and we are passing uh, passing the uh, the key. Okay. Um, you know what? We are going to do the same for the uh, endpoints. So let's add this uh, AI getaway endpoint. That will be a new uh, new variable. All right. Again, just good practice to um, AI get away endpoint. I think this is, yeah, yeah, that's get away endpoint. We should be good. All right. Um, we've just generated payload. So again, AI get away endpoint. Good. Here we got the open AI key, entropic, good as well. And I think we are ready to go. So let's give this a try. Okay, so Definitely using the uh, GPT-40 here, based on uh, the response time. Uh, let's try another one, just to be sure that we are actually not using um, a value from a variable. Uh, great restaurant. All right, here we go. So everything is working. And because again, we have this, uh, we are using the universal getaway. If at any time GPT-40 is not available, uh, we will switch to Entropic. And in that case, uh, Sonnet. Um, so the last thing we need to do here, so we can get rid of this, we are going to add some logic to check if uh, enter contains no enter because again check for enter this is what we are passing in our prompt right there um we are returning no, uh, no answer if we can't fully answer or have missing information. So um, we want to be able to catch that. Um, no answer, actually. Otherwise, we are sharing that information or the answer with the user. And then we can go back right there. So here, uh, if we don't have an answer, let's uh, just tell the user that we can't answer that. Actually, I can't answer that. And same thing here, uh, going back. So no answer. Let's put that in this color and we do the same for the fail part. Um, this is a good practice just not to forget, or at least if you haven't fully uh, designed those um, or handle those failed ports, be sure to do this because at least the user will get, sorry, I can't answer that if something goes wrong. If you don't do this, that will just end the conversation. 
without noticing the user that something is not is not working. Um, all right, let's put that in blue. Uh, we are capturing here, so actually let's change that to blue. That will be blue as well. This one is uh, to init the variable. And uh, we should be good. This one is the answer, so we are back here. Let's uh, get some space from here. Keep that if we need to test that. Um, and here, same thing, uh, coming from a no answer, but um, this is a, a correct pass, so we put that in blue. This is green, we've got an answer. This is green, we've got a response. And this is green, we've got a response. Okay, we can put that in blue. Check for answer. Uh, answer. And because we are sharing that with the user, let's do this color. This is a check, so blue. And uh, yeah, no answer. We need to link that right there. So let's put that, let's put that in the same color. And let's do a another pass, another test. Let's do tell me more about voice flow. Let's do about instead. So we should use GPT O here, or GPT four O. All right. Okay, so it looks like it works. And this is how you can build a fullback um, and while using a brand new model without risking to have your agent uh, to be uh, off if something goes wrong. Um, and uh, if like a lot of users want to also use the same model you're using, um, yeah, that's uh, always a good thing to have. So I hope this video was helpful and um, yeah, chat soon. Bye.